Konnichiwa! Welcome to the August 1st, 2021 edition of Pro Wrestling Throwdown. I'm your host, Luke the Big Dog Williams. He's Caleb Black. That's our instant... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, that's a lie. This is Luke the Big Dog Williams. I'm Caleb Black, along with our in-studio producer, the mighty Max Fury. Luke, how's your Sunday? It's a Sunday. It is a Sunday. It's wrestling day. It is wrestling day. And boy, do we have bones to pick. Oh, so many bones, so many picks. Max, how's your Sunday? Doing good. We got some good conversations. We're going to talk about some wrestling. Yes, we are. Got a good week ahead of us. Yes. We do. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, I guess we'll jump right into it. Like we started off last week talking about how AEW had acquired CM Punk. Yep. This week, we're going to talk about, well, we're going to start off talking about how the WWE let Bray Wyatt slip through their fingers. I don't get it. I don't get it. I get a bunch of their releases. I even get some of the releases on Black Wednesday. You let Alistair Black go without even checking his no-compete clause. He showed up a month later on AEW, killing it, by the way. Yes, by the way. All week long. And now you've let Bray Wyatt go. Now, we know there has been some controversy with his release, his time off, his, you know, dealing with the fact the passing of Luke Harper, his yes. best friend, uh, took a very strong emotional toll on him. Uh, which didn't help his, you know, didn't help his emotional state. Nor does you know the exposure to wrestling fans, such as most of your illustrious selves. And uh, now he has been released from the WWE. Yeah, um, the details keep coming in that uh, about what has transpired and why he was let go, and it has just been made, as you can see, live and in, in live, live and in color. The it was playing. John Laurinaitis who made the call to Bray. John Laurinaitis. Citing that the release was due to budgetary reasons. Uh, notification was also sent out to the roster minutes before the news was made public, who were also told it was in regards to budget cuts. Uh, PW Insider, I'm not a sponsor, also uh, confirmed that Laurinaitis' news and added that Johnny Ace is in the middle of moving back to Connecticut currently, so it was kind of a off-the-cuff Yeah. Here's your release. Thanks for your 12 years of service. Yeah. And getting everything that we needed you to get over, over while still, uh, here's a big fuck you. Um, and again, the budget cuts coming from the fact that they've recorded record profits this year and last year, billions of dollars worth of record profits over yeah. the last two years, and the budget cuts so they can, you know, position themselves for some sort of corporate mechanism that we all assume is going to yeah occur. the the idea of them releasing bray wyatt of all people uh while stupid. keeping most of the roster that they have is one of the most ridiculous stupid, things that stupid, you could possibly stupid. do hello yanni welcome to the live stream welcome uh budget cuts yes budget, budget cuts, cuts. Yeah, nonsense not you don't need to cut your budget when you've just turned record billion dollar profits no. what you need to do is write better tv and utilize the talent you have you idiots! Now I said this to you in private as yeah. well as Max. We're gonna have, we're gonna rehash a lot of the conversation yeah. we had earlier because it was great. Um, if Bray Wyatt or Wyn Wyndham Rotunda, I guess is what is yeah is going to be known going forward. I guess what a great um, man. If he doesn't jump to AEW he and will. take over for Luke Harper as the leader of the Exalted One of the Dark Order, it's yeah. a mistake. He'll definitely show up in AEW. Um. You know, being the ultimate tribute to his fallen friend, I think would it's, be fantastic. It's funny to me that Vince says he doesn't see them as competition, yet he just keeps stacking their roster with people who are going to be competition. Yeah, he's just handing a loaded gun. Yeah. Like, here, here's this. Do me a do NXT, me in. NXT drew 520,000 viewers on Tuesday. AEW drew again for the fourth week in a row over a million. Right. Those ratings are climbing. They're, I mean, obviously, they're in some hot water, which we'll talk about the sponsorship right. issue that they got themselves into right. Wednesday. But um, I'm staying on the Bray Wyatt yeah. topic. Uh, Alexa Bliss has been receiving uh, carriage house. Su yeah. Uh, super amounts of hate um, tweets and emails, I guess, uh, from the fans claiming that his release was somehow her fault. Um, no. First off, uh, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. The Alexa Bliss has no creative control, no none of that no. over anything that takes place. That's a place. gimmick they gave her. Bray Wyatt 
had you mental needs. health issues, um, physical that health needed, issues. That he needed to leave for a family at home. Uh, his best friend just died. They just had, but not to mention his wife just had another baby this year. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, dude had a lot going on. To here's the deal, okay? We, every time it Later. seems that the internet wrestling community is together on something or it, it, to the positive anyway, Bunch of um, then they come and they do stuff like this uh, to the extreme that she set her Twitter to private. Um, which means there's no telling how much stuff she got, not only just on the, the Twitter page itself, but DMs, I'm sure, were probably pretty nasty. Um, oh, I'm sure. Uh, it's but, not um, her DMs, fault. She, she took the gimmick. She ran with the yeah. gimmick. Yeah, her boss gave her a job to do, and she did it, because yes. surprise, just, I'm going to let, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna say something right now. Oh, I don't know if you should do that. And, uh. I know this is going to come as a surprise yeah. to a lot of people. Okay. Don't break kayfabe. But wrestling. Don't tell anybody I'm telling you this. I'm not okay? listening. Wrestling's fake. It has a script. The endings are predetermined. I don't hear a word he's saying, by the way. I don't endorse this at all. It's not real. It's a clown show with a little bit of dancing thrown in. Don't tell your friends. See, you're going to alienate our fans now. But anyway, we don't have any fans. We have diehard, intelligent followers who put up with my, our shenanigans. Alexa Bliss uh, was just as stunned as everybody else was. Still real to me, damn it. Um, the thing is, is what a lot of people don't understand is why I don't, I don't understand is why they would think for some ungodly reason that she would want something like that done when her gimmick What's relies on Bray Wyatt. Wyatt. Exactly. It, and now she's her gimmick is useless in my opinion now. Again, it it the idea that that this was somehow by Alexa Bliss's design and these these fucking animals just run with it is ridiculous. Her boss said, "Hey, this is what creative has for you." She took it and said, "Okay, because you pay me lots and lots of money to do my job and I'm a model fucking employee." Well, not only that, but I mean, you idiots. Know, the, idiots. The, fiend, the fiend was the hottest thing WWE had. Well, yeah. at, in in that stretch of time, uh, at first, uh, it was the most over gimmick. I'll give some of that to you. Um, Alexa Bliss being brought into it uh, was okayed by Bray. Like Bray was good with it. Like, yeah. yeah, bring her in. Yeah, again, he put a stamp of approval on it. It right. worked again. Just to reiterate, even if he wasn't okay with it. It doesn't His matter. boss handed him a piece of paper and said, this is the job you have to do now. Right. Because uh, wrestling's not real. They took it, and they ran with it, and it was good. Uh, her uh, her being in the gimmick brought a new side to it. It changed it a little bit. You know, it was like, okay, well, now this guy is yeah. brainwashed. I'll oh, tell you what. Bliss. It, was, it was good story. It time. is still one of the most memorable Raw moments in recent memory. Like over the, the 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 night that he targeted Alexa Bliss, and it just gave you that really creepy like uh -huh. oh oh no, I don't I know exactly what this feels like, but I'm not going to verbalize it. But this is so gross. Yes, but it's in like an intriguing way, uh, visually just incredible. However, good news on the horizon. Obviously, uh, AEW will absolutely have to set their sights on Bray Wyatt. He's yes. not done. He can't yeah, do no unless course. I mean unless he is. That's his prerogative, but if he if he needs to go anywhere to work, Tony Khan, with all of the people he's thrown money at just to have on his TV, would be a fool not to throw money at Bray Wyatt. Agreed. One hundred percent. Bray Wyatt's mind for professional wrestling yeah. is on par with some of the greats. Yeah. I would even put it on par with Raven. Yeah. Uh being as as into the wrestling game as Raven Agreed. was. Even on in my opinion, up there with Paul Heyman. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, though, if they get Bray Wyatt. Like, let's just say they get Husky Harris. Right. What would they do with him? What would AEW do? Yeah. Now, I know I know your bit it would be the leader of the Dark yes. Order, and obviously that's the most fitting thing. He'd have to change his name. Well, yeah, he's going to have to. Which would be great. But what if that's not the route they go? Like, let, let's, let's brainstorm. Obviously, AEW <laughs> does have a room for gimmicks. Yeah. Do, do we keep Bray Wyatt with the, with the pseudo-Dark trend gimmick or do we change him up do we repackage it 
Yes, you. Uh, here's my, and my and this is my opinion for yeah. being in the business as long as I have on both sides or both sides of the curtain. Yes, you want to keep it similar. You don't have to do the same route, but you want to keep it similar because people, when they hear that Wyndham Rotunda or Husky Harris or Bray Wyatt or whatever he calls himself, when he comes in, people are going to want to see. The follow the buzzards are yeah. gonna want to see the your heroes something, something you along those lines. Yes, if you don't go the dark order, and this is yeah straight off the cuff, if you don't go the dark order, the best way for you to do something one leave Cody Rhodes out of the entire picture. He has needs I no was hands just on about this. To say what, what they're, gonna he bring, needs, they're gonna debut him against Cody Rhodes. What he needs is either come in to either one take on Malachi Black. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, a million times. Two would be Sting. Also, yes, a million times. <laughs> and three would be to join Eric Redbeard and Braun Strowman and just bring the family. Eric Redbeard and Strong Broman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and bring the family. That's what they should call it, just the family. The family. It would work. Yeah. It would totally work. Those guys can still go. Braun Strowman still got name, uh, name value, not as much as yeah. he did at one point in his career. Eric Redbeard's killing it. What killing it on. Now I, know that I now, now I know that you're joking. But on the flip side of that, that'd be cool, right? What if negative one is the person who brings Bray in? That also would be dope. Like um, I mean, Uncle Uncle I would, Wyndham. I would have to concede the fact that they're going to use negative one in the serious capacity on their television. And that's a that's a whole piece of crow pie that I'm not well, yet prepared. I to watched eat. a video. Of this kid and Liv Morgan, yeah, running drills in a ring. And to be completely honest with you, the, kid, the kid's got some stuff now. Kid is twelve. I know, and he's got it. And he's got old. that that factor that we all look for, and that's I am already to subjected to enough children on AEW. <laughs> and I don't mean we're not talking about Cody Rhodes. We're talking anymore. about one. Uh, no. Um, Honestly, that would be what I would do. I would bring him in uh, for the Dark Order one because I think that that's a, I think that's poetic in a way. Yeah. To come in, you know, Luke being his best friend, the problems that has been caused in his life uh, with the mental health and everything was because of that. For him to come in, pick up where Luke left off. Yeah. Short lived, but where it left off to pick up his best friend, his brother's work. Yeah. And be like, okay, you did the, you laid the ground, you rest easy now. I got this. Yeah, that, in my opinion, is the best thing for them to do. Or he comes in and steals negative one, or he comes <laughs> in to destroy the, <laughs> which would also be dope. There are a lot of options though, and obviously, like I said, I, I mean, I'm genuinely optimistic that they're going to pick up Ray White. There's no reason for them. if they don't, it's a mistake. Yeah, agreed. Uh, however, that's all the news we have on that at the moment. Yes. So we're going to pivot away, pivot, pivot away from that to pivot? Uh, to uh, a couple of other stories that happened this week. Number one, uh, AEW in preparation to debut its event Rampage. Yes. At the what United Center? The United Center in Chicago, a ten thousand five hundred seat allotted arena sold out in a matter of two hours. So. AEW's inaugural event, Rampage, Chicago, August 25th, will be live from Cheyenne tonight. No, it's going to be live on TBS and uh, for an hour long uh -huh. in Chicago, yeah. a week before All Out, uh -huh. and it's already sold out, uh -huh. and uh, rumor has it that there's going to be somebody who shows up there. Yeah, it's staying. It's always this thing. Thing, is totally uh, thing. The obvious, the obvious thing is that we're all anticipating that CM Punk will show up. Uh, it would make the perfect. That'd be the perfect place to debut him. Agreed. It'd be, or at least maybe if they don't debut him there, if they do like an on-camera thing, because All Out is the following week, also in Chicago. Yes. Uh, something. What you do is you tease at the end of the show, however you have to. Also, interesting. I I noticed something on Twitter <laughs> just yesterday. That the band in Living Color, yeah, just started following AEW, and the thing is with that is that he can use that theme song because WWE never owned the rights; they, they leased, leased the, the rights. rights. Therefore, what you do at the end of Rampage is you kick the and Nell Cult of Personality. Don't even just 
Just play the song. So I say just play all the song going up there. And then just put all out. You know what uh, I thought? Get a graphic yeah. and the song. You know what That's I thought would be kind of deep? If they get the final countdown for Brian instead of Flight of the Valkyries, because it's what he used to use on the Indies. Yeah. What if, like, they pulled... You remember whenever uh, Triple H challenged Taker when they both came back for WrestleMania? Yes. Taker comes out, has the long, beautiful entrance. Before he even gets a chance to say anything, Triple H music hit, hits, meets him in the ring. They don't say a word. They just look at each other and point to the Mania sign. What if you get the cult of personality, the da 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 he gets out in the ring, blah, 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 goes to pick up a mic to say something, and then... Oh, man. The Brian, or vice versa. You know, yeah, whichever, whichever works. Because it would do, be baby. really cool to do the Brian part of that with people expecting yeah. Punk and getting Brian. Everybody's see, gonna be happy. That would be the swerve. That's what I would yeah. do. I would I would build up Punk and then a Brian baby. But I also know that a live Chicago crowd expecting Punk and having bought tickets and not don't getting get Punk. punk? Uh, yeah, no. The United Center would go up in flames, which yeah. good as it should. <laughs> be as it should. Time, Danny. <laughs> 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 no, but no, yeah. Um, that that means uh, the the Darby Allen tease. Oh yeah, even if you're the best in the world. Yeah, Darby Allen to me uh, would be the perfect first guy. I mean, they're both straight edge. They both got the parallels. It will get Sting away from Orange Cassidy, which we can all be happy about. Would they bring him in as a heel? It doesn't matter. They wouldn't bring him in against Brian immediately. That's a match. That's a marquee match. That's something you want to build to. Also, you have to look at the AEW WWE structure, and that yeah. is AEW. Heels and faces aren't necessarily how they run things anymore. There, yeah. you see Those heels tired versus old heels. wrestling tropes, as Cody yeah. so eloquently. Pointed. Faces versus faces is something that they've built yeah. a lot on in the last what almost two years that they've been in existence. Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna first off bringing Punk in, regardless of if Brian's in the ring with him or not. When you bring him in in Chicago, it doesn't matter who's standing across the ring from him; he's over. See, he, he, they're gonna cheer the man. But that's that's where you, that's why you debut him as a heel. You get him cheering, you get him making all this noise. You let him pick up a mic and be like, you know what? Kind of weird to me that now you're chanting my name. Right. Kind of weird to me that now you're all here. Kind you know, and just like have him just start off. Yeah, I took I took the Mark's money. I'm here because. This company needs me, and yeah. it needs me a hell of a lot more than I needed it because I've been perfectly fine staying at home for the last 10 years. Also, you also got to look in the fact with Brian, the idea that they can play off the story that CM Punk left, yeah. and that's when Brian that's becomes when Brian a star. Success. I, it took and, me to leave for you to be somebody. And remember this, too. CM Punk was the WWE's first attempt at really bringing in somebody from the indies. Yes. And... Uh, Without CM Punk, I mean, he could even reference this, and it's true. None of the indie guys on AEW would mean a damn thing right now. He could tell because them. he was the one who exposed the independent scene to the mainstream with the WWE taking their chance. Yes, TNA was there, and uh, Ring of Honor, and blah, blah, blah. The first mainstream major indie talent that got signed by the WWE as an experiment got signed by Paul Heyman to, for the WWE yes. was CM Punk. Also, I mean, you could also play up that entire speech there, and then at the end of it, all Punk would have to say is you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. Oh, what that's all he says. He well, here's out. the deal. When Jericho come back in WWE and did the whole oh my God. The crowd thing and not saying anything, and then when he did say something, he, he was, was like, oh, now you people cheer? Yeah. Over. Brilliant. Brilliant. Th that's the way you do it, but Darby Allen and Punk will be great. Brian and Punk's gonna happen. It's it's just gonna happen. That, like I said, but that's a marquee match. You don't start off with that. No, you use that at full you, gear. You build that. You build that to full gear. You build that all the way to the next all out. So here's the deal. I they keep don't even, I keep them apart each other for a, for a fucking year they straight. They don't even have to wrestle on TV every week. No, just have them trade yeah. blows on a microphone. That's do, all you do have it like to Roberts do. the Undertaker. Yeah, don't, not even come close for a year. Just have them talk. All right, so off the top of your head, three guys you want to see CM Punk wrestle in AEW and three guys you want to see Brian wrestle in AEW. Okay, that's They good. can be the same person okay. or different people. All right, uh, we'll go Brian first. Okay. Uh, Omega. Yeah. I want to see him work Omega. That's a fair argument. Um, Brian, I would also like to see work um, – I mean, I've seen it before, but uh, Christian Cage. I'd like to see Brian and, Kay, and and Christian. Yeah. I think that that dynamic there would be fantastic. And, of course, I mean, I can't go without saying that. I, I think him and um, 
Man, there's so many top three. Yeah. Daniel Bryan and Moxley now. That one doesn't do as much for me, but I can see the appeal to it. Uh, as far as Punk, um, Omega. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to count Daniel Bryan into this because that's right, obviously going to happen. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Omega. Yep. Uh, honestly, the way he is now, uh, Dustin. Ooh. I would love a Dustin, Dustin Rhodes. Punk. Punk, because you be, could go off the alcohol and I'd the be, drugs I'd be there. Home for that. And uh, Adam Hangman Page. Uh, I like those. those Hangman those Page, for options. sure. For sure, Page. Uh, I personally, I want Brian and Andrade. That would be good. Because Andrade is such Ooh, a... Oh, I didn't think about Black, too. Well, I'll but, get to that. Yeah. But Andrade is such a brilliant technical wrestler, and people really don't get to see that. But him and Punk, or I'm sorry, him and Brian would tear it the fuck up. Yeah, I agree. Uh, another, another, like, another one for Brian that would be a really good match, and it'd be a little bit different in the way that they could build it. Would be Kazarian. Yeah, I think their styles would really, really complement each other. Kazarian isn't one of the guys who's aged out yet. He's still got a lot of vitality. He can still move. I don't know why I didn't say Christopher Daniels and Brian either. Well, eh, I guess I think Daniels and AEW has... doesn't do it for me a lot. Not nearly as much as Daniels did it for me in Impact. Well, that was numerous years ago. That was too, 16, yeah. 16, 17, 18 years ago. But, well, no, sorry, 16 and up. Uh, and the third person for Brian, yeah, I think Omega. Yeah, I think you have to say Omega. I think you're fucking obligated with this. <laughs> uh, and, and honestly, it should take place in Japan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for Punk, though, the first name on my list, and I know he's a New Japan guy, but he's been in AEW before, is Kenta. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah. That's coming. A lot of people say it'd be in bad taste to do a thing with them in Cabana, so I'll leave that to the side because that's something we can discuss later. Right. Punk and Malachi Black. Yeah. If for nothing else, then the fucking strike exchanges that they would have and the promos that they could cut. The promos. And how CM effect. Punk could talk about how you know Tommy End was going to be the next CM Punk. That's what everybody thought. And yet here he is, another outcast just like me, blah, 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 blah. And because of the promos alone, Punk and Cody. Yeah. And I know I'm saying that I want you to debut somebody against Cody. But if you've got to put Cody in a program with anybody, oh, I just thought of another one for Brian. I can't believe I didn't think of MJF. Brian and MJF. Punk and MJF. Punk and MJF, again, but just for the promos. I don't want to hear – I don't want to watch him wrestle. I want to well, hear him talk. Well, we're going to talk about promos. <laughs> I, we'll just do Lance Archer just so Jake and CM Punk can have I promos. I started saying Jake and – oh, Jake and Punk. Give it to me. Put it on a plate. Smother <laughs> sex and sauce. Leave me alone. <laughs> But yeah, so Punk and Brian on the horizon uh, yep. Brian, for AEW now. Hopefully, Wyatt is as well. Dude, uh, landscape's changing, buddy. AEW is getting another show. They're gonna have to stock the talent. They're gonna have to stock the pool with with talent that each show is gonna draw on too. Also, you know, with the uh, we hadn't touched on this yet, but uh, also the Iconics being a possibility yep. to be brought in with Britt Baker. Yep. You've got your women's division. Thunder Rosa just signed. Yeah, boy. You've got all these big. Top level female talent out there that are like they're looking for a place to go, yep. and they don't have a place to go because WWE, if they didn't build you in the performance center, they don't want anything to do with yep. it. And that's sad because some of the best women wrestlers in the world are on the indies right now. Agreed. Go to IWTV and watch, it's just the way it is. What is that? Uh, we got a question. Is there a time frame break can't be on TV? If there is, it's 90 days, you'll have a 90 day uh, a no compete, but it all. It, a lot of that also depends on the nature of the releases. So we won't know anything about the no-compete clause for a couple days. Also, we, we don't know if Bray Wyatt's contract was up. Right. And that's why and he was released. Keep this in mind, too. He may not be in a hurry to get back into wrestling. He may need some more time to work on himself. I mean, th this is all speculation. Yes. Point. Yes. So, um, Do I believe it's going to take place? Like Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, with the with the women, go to IWTV and yeah. watch some of these uh, these outstanding female athletes that put a lot of the stuff you see on TV now to shame. Yeah, they're fantastic. Also, I heard that Vicky Guerrero is a big advocate for bringing in Ruby Riot. 
Yes. To AEW as well. That was also She'd talked about uh, this past week. She'd be great. Her and Thunder Rosa alone. Oh my God. Would be fantastic. Holy. I didn't even think about that, but yes. Their styles her and, would her mesh. And Baker would be fucking yeah. great. Yeah. 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 Are you bringing the Iconics on top of that? Game on. Game on. There, <clears throat> it's, it's building itself to being a better women's division than anything we've seen in a while. Do you wonder if Joe regrets going back to NXT no. now that he knows Brian and Punk signed with AEW? No, and I think the reason being is because Joe knew that when Triple H All was right, like, right, what are you right, doing? Right. Here's a contract. Yeah. Joe knew. Yeah, take my money. They're not going to offer me a deal like this, and this isn't going to be a big thing if they don't have plans for me. That's true. And now, also, with Bray being gone now, of course, he could not have known that. Yeah. Or the talent that has been released, that opens up a spot for Joe. That's true. That's true. Joe uh, is already, when he when he become the general manager's friend or whatever you call him, bodyguard, liaison, whatever, and yeah. they did that first stare down with Karrion Cross. I was like, that's money. That's, money. that's where the money that's is. And now we're going to get that SummerSlam weekend with a full house of people. Yeah, boy. That match will be epic. Yes, it will. Also, I think that that match will also be carrying across the swan song from NXT, and he's going to the big game. Yeah, he'll be going to the main roster. And then you leave the title on Joe and let Joe build yeah. everybody in NXT because if there's anybody you have on your roster that can build, it's Joe. Yeah. Because Balor's already on the way. Is already so say Balor's already gone. Cole, you have Cole left, but how much longer are you going to have Cole on NXT? Well, unless he's got a deal like Ciampa where he doesn't want to leave NXT. Well, that's true, but people but say I don't that. See Cole I don't see or, that. But I also don't see Cole. I really don't see Cole coming to the main roster until he puts on some weight. I don't see Cole. I see Cole leaving. I think AEW, maybe. I think AEW would offer him what he needs. Yeah. Um, More time know. with Britt. The, yeah, his, his his girls there. Yeah, uh, the talent that he really really respects and works with with like I said with up up down down and everything earlier when we were talking. Yeah, it's enticement to be like okay, well we can I can sit here and I can do this or I can wait till my contracts up and I can go where my friends are. Yeah, I can make a difference in a company. You know, he was part of the elite. He was the leader of the. Bullet Club. Yeah. You got all this Bullet Club discussion taking place for the last few months. Adam Jay Cole. White, an impact. Yeah, Adam Cole is is built for AEW. Agreed. Agreed. Uh physically and any other way you can look at it, he's built for AEW. So while we're talking about AEW, <laughs> Chris Jericho has his death match with Nick Motherfucking Gage. Yes. Motherfucking MDK. MDK all day. All fucking day. A uh, member of our and a fight underground roster. Yes. Or fraternity, rather. He's, fraternity. He's worked with us before. Uh, during the segment in which MDK uses his uh, most recognizable gimmick, pizza cutter, they cut to a picture in picture commercial. And if I'm if I could have made this up any better, I don't think I'd have been able to. It's literally a Domino's commercial of a pizza cutter cutting through this beautiful, thick, cheesy pizza, while on the other side of it, Nick Cage is cutting into Jericho's head with it. Yeah, Gage, you couldn't have timed it better. Yeah, which you just couldn't. has prompted a, a tremendous amount of backlash from the Domino's Corporation. Uh, having paid for that advertised spot, not knowing – well, and obviously they used uh, what's called like an MOS spot which means it can be put anywhere. Um, so I don't think that Khan intentionally aired the Domino's no. commercial no, alongside it. But, boy, talk about bad timing. Or good timing, depending on your perspective. Hey, to me, it's all hilarious. Heat, all heat's great. good heat. But uh, Domino's is now considering pulling those sponsored spots from TNT. So you do have to wonder if there's going to be some backlash. I don't think so, because then Papa John's just will slide right That's back. That's exactly down. what I was about to say. And be like, hey um, – you can cut that motherfucker all day long yeah, if you want to. That's just exactly. Shaq's just going to show up and be like, what up, boys? I brought Papa John's. A little shoulders thing. That's right. Uh, you vamp for a second. I need a drink. Okay. It's not um, alcoholic, I promise. He promises. I kind do. Of, kind of. Oh, I, um, I don't either. But no, Nick Gage, yeah, he had a, an incredible death match with Je Chris Jericho. Um, it was everything that you wanted it to be. It's also the first time that nationally televised Deathmatch had taken place on TV, especially 
broadcast TV mm. since 1996. First time wow. since 96. Um, you know, because the stigma behind deathmatch wrestling mm. uh, is something is really hard to sell past censors first and foremost. But uh, the way they did it was classy. It made sense. It told the story. Chris Jericho can do anything. Well, I for, firmly believe that. For the sake of those watching that may not know, what's what's the di big difference between a deathmatch wrestling and, say, what most people are used to as hardcore wrestling? Hardcore wrestling is, uh, is a tamed version, in my opinion, of deathmatch wrestling. Hardcore wrestling is um, basically is anything found usually around the ring, in my opinion, is what dictates hardcore wrestling. Deathmatch wrestling is when you bring in instruments like non typically glass, found, yeah. like the uh, barbed wire, like I mean, real barbed wire, not coated barbed wire like most places use. Uh, the, the difference it, it really isn't a big difference. It's a state of mind. Deathmatch wrestling is is hardcore wrestling was basically a tame ver tamer version of deathmatch wrestling. Word, dog. Hold up. Sander, hello guys. Your leather bracelet was cool. Thank you. These are handmade by our in-studio producer Max Fury, and they are inscribed with WWKD. That is Wicked. a wrestler. If you're familiar with the movie Ready to Rumble, starring David Arquette and um, Oliver Platt, right? And no, it's not Oliver Platt. It's a uh, Yes. Yeah, yeah, Oliver Platt. Platt. Yeah, and, and yeah, and Sean Com. Uh, they they have bracelets to say WWKD, which means what would King do? King is the uh, fictional wrestler created for the movie. Jimmy, Jimmy King's, King's the, the best wrestler. wrestler. He's the best wrestler, better than all the wrestlers. He's got class. He's got class. He'll rule that ass. He'll rule that ass. That ass. Jimmy da, 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 King. King. That's all we really That's have. Right. Uh. Well, no, there are none available on Etsy, but get a hold of us on if Facebook. You, yeah, find us on Facebook.com and we can set you up with a merchant deal of some sort, of some sort, uh, and we'll put Max to work. Yeah. Uh, Facebook.com slash pro wrestling throwdown. Or follow us on Twitter at pro wrestling TD. Or send us an email at pro wrestling throwdown at gmail.com. Either way, you can get to us, we'll get to you. Anything you, that, that's any ideas, anything like that, questions. Uh, products, yeah. <laughs> ideas, Something anything. Good, yeah, for sure. I'll sell this shirt if you want it. You don't want it. You don't, you don't. but if you wanted it, I, I would. I know what he's done with that shirt. I, you don't tell my secrets. <laughs> you don't know my truth. <laughs> All right, so we've we've covered um, AEW. We've covered some NXT. Yes. Uh, is it made of real cowhide? Is it made of real cowhide? The leather Maximus? It all depends. I, I guess some of them. Sometimes I make them. I make them from uh, sort of a suede. Sometimes it's a sort of sort of a faker type of leather. Uh, you know, Anyways, you could work with something if they wanted uh, something that yeah, a certain. Yeah, way. I can make it out of. I I prefer to use the real, real yeah. leather. Yeah. So yeah, get a hold of us on either Facebook or the email or whatever, and we will holler back at you. That particular one, Ain't I no think, holler back, is. girl. Yeah, this I believe is actual. Yes. 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 Uh, I want to talk about the trials of Jericho for a second. The labors. The labors. The labors yeah, the labors of Jericho. Of Jericho Drink it in, man. Because uh, next week, Juventud Guerrero returns to in ring competition on national television for the first time in 20 some odd years. Uh, and the finish of the match is that Jericho has to hit a move from the top rope to beat Juventud. Yes. So it's a finisher challenge. Yeah, a finisher match. Uh, but it feels like. Like the first, okay. So the first match is Sean Spears, and Sean Spears can use the chair. Can only use the chair. Yes. Second match is Nick Gage in because it's match. topical in a death match. Yes. Third match is here's a guy you wrestled in a linear program on WCW television over 21 years ago for a rematch. Yeah. 21 years later, which is kind of cool, but. It would be good to see that both men can still go. Yeah. You know, because we know they're going to. Um, the, the Labors of Jericho is, is a fantastic idea. Um, it it sells a lot of the, the cool points of, okay, I'm MJF. I know more about you than you think I do. I'm yeah. going to bring in all these things that you say you can do, and we're going to do them. It's fantastic. It's a shame we can't bring in Dean. 
Well, I mean, they could get Dean Malenko to do something with him, but with the Parkinson's now and whatnot. Right. What is that? Do you guys own leather coats? They look kind of badass, especially on wrestlers. Uh, yes. I own a leather coat, yes. I own a leather jacket. What's going on right Who are you? What is, is this? Is this, is this a rib? Is, are, are we on? Are we on punk right now? Is that what's going on? Punk's here. <laughs> what's going on? Why are There's we? A call to personality plays. I'm going to scream with uh, girl. Uh, Just saying. Uh, I own several leather jackets. Yes, um, and they are very cool. However, it's August, so I will not be putting it on. Um, Fair point. Unless you're going to Venmo me. Three hundred dollars. In which case, I'll put it on. <laughs> do not do that, please. Don't, don't. don't. Um, let's take a break in the news here. Yeah, uh, and let's, let's get, get into one of our into... favorite segments. Yes, which Max, is Max. It's time for birthdays. Bullshit. Hang Hang on, wait. You have one thing to. Uh -oh. to oh, okay. Check real quick. Here. There. That's for Luke right there. <laughs> There's top performance anxiety. That was supposed to be cool for we, we don't own the rights yeah, to that. You know, so it's yeah, probably yeah, a good idea. It didn't play. Uh, all right, birth birthdays. Bullshit. Birthdays, bullshit. Take it away. All right. Uh, let's see, we got a few this week coming up. Let's see, today. There's several birthdays today. Referee Mike Kyoto. Hey! hey! 55 today. He wasn't the referee that was trying to fuck on me. <laughs> Mike Kyoto actually debuted with WWE in 1989 and is the was the longest uh, ten, reigning tenured referee in Correct. the business. Right. And then until his recent release, bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. That's, That's the segment. That's the name of the segment. Happy birthday. Happy Mike birthday, Kyoto. Mike Kyoto. Also, Devon Dudley. Turned 49 today. Devon! Why is it that Devon always had to get the tables? Why couldn't Bubba get the tables? Hey, testify. Bunkhouse Happy Buck. birthday. Bunkhouse Buck, 63. 71. Ah, man, I shot way too much for that. 71. See, uh, Yoshi Tatsu from a AJPW. Yes. Was also a member of WWE for, brief, yeah. uh, for a brief period a of time. a while. Uh, Until AJ tried to kill him. Turns forty-four right. today. Happy birthday! If For how old? Forty-four. 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 Wow, wow. impressive. 44. Tomorrow, Davy Boy Smith Jr. has birthday. Harry Smith, thirty-six. Thirty-six. Yeah. I know he was just uh, a dark wrestled, match. wrestled a dark match for the WWE, yeah. along with Austin Theory, turning twenty-eight. Twenty-four. Austin Theory is only 24. Wow. I'll be damned. He is a bright future. Yeah, 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 he really does. He Son of a bitch. Yeah, true. Third, Damian Sandow. Turn All right. Aaron Stevens. 39. 39. 39. Happy birthday, Aaron oh, Stevens. Yeah. He's wrestling for the NWA right now. Yes. And uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Doing well, too. Yeah. On the fourth, Dean Malenko. Sills of Breaks birthday. 71. Uh, shut up. Uh, 49. 61. It's close. What? He wins because he's close enough going over. That, this is the price, <laughs> right? Not a wow. sponsor. Link goes up there. Also on the fourth, uh, Frankie Kazarian will turn 44. Sorry, saying he's in his 40s. Oh, yeah. and then, Do you? Sorry. <laughs> on the fifth, we have Pat Tanaka. Okay. Oh, nice. He'll turn 58. Yeah. Yeah, that tracks. And then on the seventh, Marty Bell. Marty Bell, 33. Happy birthday. Pretty much all the real birthdays that I got. Got a little bit of bullshit, though. All uh, right. Let's hear it. Any celebrity birthdays? Jason Moma turns 42 today. Jason Momoa. That's what I said. Like the cookies. Correct me. Aquaman. Always correcting me. Aquaman. You're always wrong. Aquaman turns 42. I don't know how old he is at this year, so. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know how, how many years. Survey it, says not interested enough. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, tomorrow, <laughs> the great Kevin Smith will hey. celebrate his 51st birthday. Wow. He's still so young. Star just favorite, started filming Clerks 3. One of our favorite actors and slash directors yes. slash comedians. Writer. Slash, he does it pretty much all. Yeah. yeah. He also has a hot wife. Yeah. Just saying. It's not Carl Anderson's hot Asian wife. No, no one's hot as Carl. Hot Asian wife. 
Uh, let's see, some interesting stuff here. Let's see. Uh, did you know that John Belushi was part of the original script writing for Ghostbusters? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah. He was he actually the. Should have been in it. He was the first pick um, when he decided uh, when they just when everything had taken place. Bill Murray ended up getting it instead. Oh wow! But Belushi was supposed to be originally Vagrant. Huh? Boy, that would have changed the whole. Would have changed the entire aspect of it. Also, originally it was called Ghost Head or Ghost Hunters, not Ghostbusters. Originally, Ghost Facers. Face ghost. Uh, I thought it was something different. Though. When it was when it was originally written, the the working title was Ghost Hunters. They changed it to Ghostbusters with a deal with yeah. uh, Ray Parker Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, yeah. Yeah. He couldn't figure out a way to get to work right. Um, see, some other interesting stuff. Let's see. Is that true? Yes, sir. This man has no dick. Judith Love Cohen. She, she was <laughs> her. She was the woman that created the abort guidance system that saved the Apollo 13 astronauts. Mm. She, uh, Obviously, a, a wonderful genius of a woman, yeah, like a rocket scientist. For sure, there's a story that she actually was in labor or was, was at work. She went to work the day she went into labor. Yeah, she took her work with her to the hospital, finished the project she was working on, called her boss, and then gave birth to none other than Jack, Jack Black. Black. Yeah, very interesting thing. That is interesting. That guidance system. Just for a little, a, a little science note, uh, was what hadn't been field tested on deployment drones. Right. That was the first time and using it using it on the Apollo thirteen was the first time it was implemented and it worked flawlessly uh, via satellite and telecommunications. Which therefore at the time, Jack Black saved Apollo thirteen. Technically, that's what I got from it. Technically, also Jack Black was in Nacho Libre, which is why this makes it relevant for a wrestling show. That's right. That's that. That's right. Something, You're welcome. Something maybe not so relevant, just off the top of my head, uh, mm -hmm. something I, I learned recently. Um, Hannibal, Missouri, right, yes. right, close to us. Yeah, kind of, kind of our backyard territory. There's a woman named Molly Brown, was born and raised in Hannibal, Missouri. Miss Molly she Brown. She married. She wound up marrying a guy that uh, had silver mine, and had tons and tons of money. Had this fortune saved up. And he had hidden it in they in their their wood stove. Uh -huh. And Molly Brown unknowingly burnt up their entire fortune in this wood stove. Oddly enough, his reaction was simply, <laughs> "That's okay, I can find another silver mine," which blew my mind. The point of the story is then Molly Brown wound up being one of the one of the survivors from the Titanic. Oh wow! Nice. And the movie, uh, Kathy Bates' character, is Molly Brown. Huh. Okay. It was actually a real character from our very local That's kind of dope. Missouri. That is really dope. Yeah. It's kind of an odd, neat little bullshit story. For sure. Okay. Something weird just happened. All of Sanders' messages disappeared. They were all retracted. So does that mean he removed them, or does that mean YouTube removed them? Um, being that it was... Um, we're going to stop the show here for a second. Yeah, let us let, The I'm reason just, being behind that is I believe that would be considered soliciting. Uh, no. We do not, we don't have a, we can't be monetized. So somebody asking about buying oh, okay. different things, yeah. I'm sure that when it's seen it up there, it may have triggered that it was a bot. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it was trying to purchase mm -hmm. or. Ask us about purchasing, and YouTube probably retracted the message. Well, that was weird. Um, regardless, Sander, if you're watching, um, don't be weird, bro. One, the leather jacket thing was kind of strange, but one is <laughs> if you do want to contact, we gave you all the information you can contact yeah. for the bracelets. What? Yanni, same thing goes for you. I know you got money. I know you have money. Fucking Canadians. And you Canadians and your maple syrup and Wayne Gretzky. No, he only lives nine hours away now. We should go visit him sometime. Nine hours from, from here? Yeah, he moved to the States. Dude, put us up, man. You didn't know he moved to the States? No. Yeah. Put us up, man. Seriously. And and cook, because yeah, yeah. I know you can. It's true. Hey, now. Hey, now. <laughs> hey, now. This is what dream. It's only nine hours drive here. Be part of the show. Fine, right? Right? 
the state size is 2016. Well, thank you for your participation and your submissions for birthdays and bullshit this yes. week. This is uh, Schwarzenegger's birthday is coming up too, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Schwarzenegger actually just had a birthday. Uh, there's several. That yeah. the, the Don't right worry, he'll be back. Huh? <laughs> God, I'm good today. Jesus Killing it. Christ. But no, come over. Be part of the show. Oh, yeah. we'll, have you on. we'll meet you halfway. Yeah. We'll talk about all about how Canadian wrestlers, particularly ones from yeah. 1990 to 1996. Yeah. Uh, Fries and gravy and Tim Hortons and poutine. all the other Canadian things I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, but Tim fun. Hortons is a coffee. Tim Hortons is a donut shop. Oh, I thought it was a coffee. I mean, I'm pretty sure they sell coffee there, but it's a like, donut shop. Hey, hey, you, you fucking highfalutin Canuck. Have you seen this man? You, You've seen this man, right? You, you, you hockey pucking Canuck. All right, wait. Is that, is that that's a brand of coffee too? I've right? already heard of you. It is a donut <laughs> shop, right? But they have their own brand of coffee. Well, I'm sure they probably do. Yeah, it's a franchise coffee shop. They sell donuts, donuts. fucker. Ah, ten, ah, ten bits. Ah, have you, you ever been given a receipt for a donut? It's no, it's kind of pointless, isn't it's it? Kind of, like, you don't have to bring ink and pen in. Think of paper. Well, it's kind of on. Just give me. I'll give you money. Give me donut. Yeah. You know? we'll file it under okay. T for trash, <laughs> trash. <laughs> or D for donut. donut. Whatever. What else we have on the docket this week, gang? Um. Well, uh, it's Sunday. It is Sunday. Uh, oh, it's like Dunkin' Donuts. See? Interesting okay. thing uh, I didn't realize. So for SummerSlam, SummerSlam is going to be on Saturday, and NXT Takeover Thirty Six is going to be the following Sunday. Yeah, that's weird. It's I didn't a little realize weird. they changed the schedule that much this week, or this this year. But I think it's to not have to compete with Sunday night programming. Um, kind of a Could smart be. move. Yeah. Kind of a smart move. Yeah. Plus, it's a fresh audience Saturday night, and they're doing SummerSlam in, in theaters, which might be kind of cool to go check out. That would be kind of neat. Now, I'm going to throw this up here. Um, what you got for me, daddy -o? Did Impact Homecoming take place last night? Yes. Yes, it did. Did we get the uh, – do you know the results? No, I do not. We're going to do them live. No, I do not. Live results. Let's see. Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green defeat Petey Williams and Jordan Grace. Excuse me. GCW heavyweight champion Matt Cardona. Yeah, Zach Ryder. Uh, in the <laughs> homecoming tournament. Nice. Tommy Dreamer and Rachel Ellering defeat Brian Myers and Missy Hyatt. Yeah, I saw that. Insane as that. Uh he tried to get Francie. Also, first round tournament action, Rosemary and Crazy Steve defeat Fala Ball and Tasha Steeles. Yep. Uh, uh, Diener, now going as just Diener. Damn dirty. Defeated man. Willie Mack. Nice. Well, not nice. In another uh, tournament match, semifinal, uh, Deanna Peraza and Matthew Rayhold, Raywold mm -hmm. defeat GCW heavyweight champion Back Matt Cardona and... Right. Chelsea Green. Put some respect on his name. Uh, Rosemary and Crazy Steve defeat Tommy Dreamer and Rachel Ellering. Uh, Josh Alexander successfully defends the X Division title against Black Taurus. You got it right, he does. And in the finals of the homecoming tournament, Deanna Peraza and Matthew Railhold, Rahold, however you say his last name, defeat Crazy Steve and Rosemary to win the tournament. I see. So that was the impact results. We're just going to give some different Excuse results me. here. Uh, oh, Matt Rowhold is Aiden English. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense then. Yeah. Uh, there was a super show for WWE Ooh. live in attendance featuring both Raw and SmackDown from yeah, yeah. the home of the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, hello, man. Drew McIntyre defeats Sheamus. Nice. Uh, NBA champion Bobby Portis of the Bucks joined New Day for a match which they lost to Bobby Lashley in MVP. <laughs> Uh, Nikki Ash defeats Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley to defend the championship. Oh, nice. Big E defeats Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apollo Crews defeats Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Shinsuke Nakamura <laughs> for the Intercontinental Championship retain. Bianca Belair defeats Sasha Banks to retain. John Cena and the Mysterios defeat Roman Reign and the Ustos. Nice. So that Almost happened sure last that. night in Milwaukee. Um, so as far as the results go, I think that's as far as they're giving me here. That's a pretty solid recap of the week's events, though. Yeah. Um, 
I can't. Uh, John Moxley to reunite with Sammy Callahan yeah, to reform Switchblade for a night uh, at a wrestling revolver event and uh, on October the thirtieth. Which we really should capitalize and get Moxley, Callahan, and Kingston against um, the Elite. Uh, I got two more bits of news. Let's hear. Um, Natalia was injured over the week. Yep, uh, saw that. Severely injuring her ankle. Yep, Britt um, Baker's also injured with a broken arm. Yeah, I heard that. Um, also, speaking of injuries, at AEW, Cash Wheeler. Oh, yeah. Uh, had a horrible uh, Cut, uh hit the um top of the post where where the where some of the top steel had been exposed and cut his arm to ribbons. Yeah, it was a very serious hello Tanya. Uh a very serious arm injury. Uh which is a shame because it cut the ending to an otherwise great fucking tag match way too early. Agreed. And we I've been dying to see FTR and proud and powerful in the ring collectively together. And it got cut fucking 10 minutes early. And of course, the last bit of news that we, we hadn't touched on yet. Um, besides the cash being hurt and Italia being hurt is, um, I had it escape me. Uh, Oh, uh, AEW, uh, the idea for the forbidden door Mm -hmm. being opened with, Moxley telling uh, the Good Brothers that he has a surprise for them when he comes back to Japan. I think that's going to be Sammy Callahan as well. See, that'd be dope. That would be good. That'd be dope. I'd be fine with that. NJPW Waters cooking up, man. Tanahashi challenging for the NJPW United States Championship against Lance Archer. Tanahashi, for those of you who are unaware, is the fucking Hulk Hogan of Japanese wrestling. He really is. Or, well, the John Cena of Japanese wrestling, to, to, to put it more eloquently. Yeah. Baba's uh, the, or Anoki's the Hulk Hogan of Japanese wrestling. Uh, yeah, Tanahashi, 20 plus a year veteran for the first time on international, uh, for the first time on United States television. Gonna be fucking great. Agreed. Um, uh, we're just one more, one more tick away from Okada. I know. It's getting close. That's all we need. I feel it getting close. We need the, can you feel the rain? I feel the feel, rain. Feel the joints? I can <laughs> clearly now the. No? No, not yet. <laughs> no. I don't own the rights to that, by the way. Facebook no. or YouTube, us. don't sue me. Don't sue us. Sue him. Don't sue me. Don't sue me. I ain't the one that's got... Max has the telephone pole money. He he can do it. <laughs> Love you. Love you. All right, guys. Well, any other pressing news and or business for the week of pro wrestling? Not that I can think of. Uh, we we're looking forward to uh, moving to SummerSlam yep. and the things that are taking place there. Um, and don't forget, SummerSlam is going to be a full. We're not going to be going live during the event, no. Uh, but we're going to have a full day. We're going to do a couple of point games. We're going to do a full point recap. Uh, we're going to we're going to keep the live format, but we're going to go back to the segment. We're going to have some more segments uh, built into that show specifically. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you join us on our SummerSlam party. Maybe uh, maybe we'll do a, a game of some sort for the fans. Where uh, maybe we can get another one of those free T shirts out there. Could be a possibility. That, that one lonely pull. One is the loneliest number. One is the loneliest number that you ever do. It is a rather lonely Two. pull, though. It's all different shaded brown all by itself. Well, it's, never mind. Don't go there, man. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> don't go there. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to get kicked off you. Standards and practices be <laughs> all over okay. our ass. All right, guys. Well, if end you up, have... end up butt pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we get ourselves into any more trouble, oh, if that concludes yeah. our order of business today, we'd like to thank all you of you. Know, I've got one more. Oh, oh no. Look what you started. Oh, I just saw something, like, something I just, <laughs> okay. just come across. kind of struck me as interesting. Yes. The, you very, know the telephone poles drive, were invented. <laughs> drive through windows at restaurants and stuff were created for the military. Do you know that? I did not. Well, I did not know that. Um, Military uh, personnel were not allowed to be in uh, to wear their their colors and stuff in public. But yeah, they they weren't about to, dare, to switch into their civilian clothes just to yeah. go into McDonald's. So the manager there's I think that was the first one was in Arizona decided well we'll cut a hole in the side of the wall they can pull up and get their meals. That makes so sense. They they created the drive through windows. For Did the not know that. Personnel. How about that? 
Well, thank you, Max, just for another, for another well of process. useless information. That's it. That's yes. it. Here's the I'm deal. Full of useless information. It's going to be a new segment called In the Workshop with Max Fury. Oh, God. Well, I just throw it in. And he's <laughs> just going to throw some just randomized anything. Did just you know anything. Did sleep with one eye open? All right, kids. Did you, did you, <laughs> have you ever thought about the fact of what would happen if <laughs> baby eyes fell out like baby teeth. <laughs> now everyone at home gets to think about what that. For baby the rest eyes of their fell life. out like baby teeth and grew back. Look what you did, Sunday. <laughs> it, this is somebody's day. I don't remember whose day Sunday is supposed to be. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's day. All right, kids. Well. Thank you very much. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Pro Wrestling TD. Find you us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Throwdown. Send us an email at Pro Wrestling Throwdown at gmail.com. And as always, from us to you. Hold on. Nine hours away. Meet you halfway. Meet you halfway. On his dime. Halfway. Uh, you know what? We'll buy. As always, keep, keep it in, in the, the ring. ring. Bunch of fucking idiots. That's what I work with. <laughs> oh, you know you love me. Fucking morons. <laughs>